Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It is our honor to have guests around the world to join today's webinar, which is hosted by AWS. This is Louis from AWS China, and I will be your host today. We are taking this opportunity to share information with our international customers who are extending their business into Greater China region and continue to use AWS services there. Today, we have two guest speakers from AWS China to introduce some of the key things you may interest to know while you are going to China. The first is Mr. Apollo Chu, AWS International BD Executive based in Seattle, Washington. The second is Mr. Sheng Bo Chen, a solution architect from AWS China. Today's meeting will cover three sessions and last about one hour and extra 10 minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions during the broadcasting, please submit through Q&A button on your screen anytime. We have experts to answer your questions online. The webinar replay will send to your email later. Now, let's start with our first speaker, Mr. Apollo Chu. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar hosted by AWS. Uh, my name is Apollo Chu. Uh, I'm the international BD executive based in Seattle, uh, Washington. Uh, today, my colleague Shengbo and I will introduce some of the key things you may interest to know while you are going to China. Uh, Shengbo is actually the solution architect from our China team. Uh, he has a very good insight on technical and operation details. Uh, and we were able to take uh, some questions uh, after our presentation. Uh, I'd like to start from our service infrastructure in Greater China region. Uh, some of our customers, uh, well, they think about applied cloud services at country level. Uh, they've been struggling uh, about the uh, complexity of serious things like uh, uh, the operation process, the licensing, uh, the data security, and network performance, and the local laws and regulation, and so on. <clears throat> but uh, I have to say that uh, this is normal, as cloud service is something new on this market. So different countries would have a different mechanism to manage that like a new business. So the good thing is that uh, we have already found the answer in China. And AWS, fortunately, uh, we have solved the issues and have started to provide our service for China customers back to about six and a half years ago. So here we are today. This is AWS service blueprint in Greater China region today. So basically, you will see that we have uh, three AWS regions available, two in mainland China and one in Hong Kong. So the difference is that uh, one, Hong Kong region is connected to other AWS regions in other countries. So this is actually the part of uh, AWS global network. While you log in to AWS Global uh, Management Council, you're able to see that AWS Hong Kong region was listed already. You can see your, uh, you can use your AWS account to log in and use any service available, <clears throat> just like what you do in any other countries. They are the same. Uh, there are three available zones in Hong Kong region providing the same SRA as uh, other countries. Uh, two, I think you guys must be more interested on are the two regions in mainland China. You can see that uh, uh, at the upper right uh, corner of the slide that uh, we have uh, two regions, uh, Beijing region in Beijing area, and the other one is uh, we call the Ningxia region, which is located in the West China. Uh, to access to these two regions, uh, customer need to apply an AWS China account. So this is different than the AWS account they use outside China. So th this is very important. And Beijing region have uh, uh, two uh, available zones and Ningxia has three. The two regions, I mean the Ningxia region and Be Beijing region are connected to each other, just like uh, you know the Oracle 
the Oregon region is connected to the North Virginia region in the U.S., but they are not directly connected to AWS regions outside China, including Hong Kong. So the connections to other countries is overlay on the public internet and through the China National Firewall. You can imagine that uh, uh, the performance will have some limitation, especially for the high volume data transit applications. So we recommend uh, if you have any service that is supporting China customers, make sure to deploy it on AWS China to gain the better performance. Alternatively, uh, we have uh, uh, already started providing the Direct Connect service or DX in China, which allow customers to connect their China local data centers to AWS data centers directly in case they have already have their own data center uh, in China today. And, and also there are uh, a bunch of APN partners are providing the SD1 solutions. So actually there are many choices here to improve the network uh, performance. But once again, what we recommended is deploy on AWS China for your China customers. Okay, I'm uh, talking about the services and the, the customers in China, uh, and for the two regions in Beijing and Ningxia, uh, we actually work with uh, two local companies to provide the services. Uh, the operation partner for Beijing region is Sinite, and the operation partner for Ningxia region is a local company named NWCD. So this operation model allow customers uh, is we're able to use the same AWS service in China and also compliance to local regulations. Uh, the next I want to introduce a little bit is on our services in China today. Uh, it is clear that uh, we are not offering all AWS service in China region yet. Actually, uh, the decision on what kind of service we launch in the market will be based on a couple of factors, uh, like the uh, customer demand, and the readiness of the infrastructure and network, and the capacity in our data center, or the pricing of uh, implementation and the cost. And also the regulation and the licensing will be a reason we need to consider of. Uh, this is a snapshot of the service available today. Uh, you may find that the interface on the AWS China's console uh, is the same to AWS Global Console. So this is to maintain the same customer experience. Uh, we, uh, we don't want our customer to relearn too much while they migrate to China. Uh, second, the service list is not as long as the one on the global console. That is like uh, what I just mentioned. Uh, we are launching service into China based on a series of factors, but we are very open and happy to hear from you guys. So please just uh, reach out to your contact person in AWS and let us know your demand on specific AWS services in China. We are a customer-centric company and we'll definitely uh, do our best to address your needs as, as soon as we can. A third one is uh, if you are now using AWS service outside China already, the implementation will be much easier. Uh, you may hear more uh, from Shengbo uh, later soon. Okay, we know how important it is to work with our APN partners serving our customers. And also we know how much is our customers rely on our partners to do business. So we have extended our partner ecosystem to China already. 
It is a common practice and a good experience that the APM partners providing service and support on the product to our customers. That is to enrich AWS service scope and address our customers' specific needs in the different market segments. So AWS Partner Network or the APN program is now in China. Uh, we have landed and localized it back to a couple of years ago to better develop our partner ecosystem. And uh, we have now enabled uh, about hundreds of uh, global APM partners in China market. They are providing the local support to our customers worldwide to extend our AWS service in China region and uh, leveraging their experience outside China. So that's why uh, you may see that we have a joint customer support with uh, Accenture, Capgemini, Deloitte, Infosys, etc. So this is one of the most important thing our partner team are working on. A second and also very critical is that uh, we have enabled hundreds of uh, China local APM partners. So the logos that are posted here, uh, it's just uh, the, some references. Uh, well, you uh, click the link underneath, you were able to uh, find more details. On the other hand, this is actually a very exciting news that uh, we have launched AWS Marketplace in China back to a couple of months ago, uh, which allow our customers to adopt the product and the service from APN ISV partners directly. I know uh, some of the, the ISV applications on the China marketplace are actually developed specifically just for the needs uh, 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 from the customers in China. So please do check out the details in this URL, at least it's on the needs. Uh, you're able to find more excited information. AWS is customer centric and our APM partners are professional in their market segment, but AWS and the APM partners weren't able to do everything. So we are not expertise of everything. So as one of the strategic plan, uh, AWS is working with our partners, establish some joint in innovation centers. So we call the uh, GIC, uh, there are five GIC actually in Greater China region, uh, in Shanghai, Chengdu, Xi'an, Qingdao, and the one in Taipei. So GIC partners of it, of AWS were able to provide the local service uh, in terms of uh, the operation support, the regulation, the legal, and the financial services. Uh, they have uh, two goals actually. Uh, so one of that is to incubate the small companies and the startups companies to go global, uh, from China to global. And the two is to support the international customer that landed in China, or we call it uh, uh, global to China, or, 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 or migrate to AWS in China. So talking about the grid, uh, I'd like to pass time to my uh, colleague, the Shengbo, to introduce some more details on the methodologies of migration into AWS China. So Shengbo, this is your turn. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for the detailed introduction about AWS China regions by Apollo. My name is Seng Bo Chen. I'm the solution architect. I will continue to share the migration scenarios from global to AWS China. In China, you can get the same support as you can get from global AWS. You can always go to our SA for the solution validation and the best practice sharing in AWS China. If you need solution landing consulting, or implementation. You can get the support from our professional service or our partners. In this session, first, I will go through the preparation you should really take care for the AWS China environment from technical point of view, followed by the introduction of China region connectivity with other global regions. I will also have a brief introduction regarding the CloudFront in China since it is quite popular. 
Next, I will walk you through the typical migration scenarios and the recommendation accordingly. Last but not least, there is a case sharing for the migration. First of all, when we start to use China region, we need to talk about the IM user and policies in this part. We should be aware that in China region, there's no root user like in the global regions. And secondly, AIM resource name is different. In global, the second field of the AIM is AWS, while it is AWS Dashian in China region. These two parts are the most common mistakes that our users in China regions will make. If you are not coding or converting correctly, you will see that there are errors in your automated tools. As introduced by Apollo, China region account, a concept is totally separated from the global regions. So, there is no feature like army cross-region copy or snapshot cross-region copy across China regions and global regions. So, if we like to prepare an army, there are typical two ways. First, good news is that Cloud Endure will be available in China soon. You can utilize this powerful migration tool to migrate a VM from global to China directly. It is a very good tool for the VM migration from either cloud or data center to AWS China regions with one-click migration feature. Secondly, you can still import VM as an image using a VM import, which is the same way as what you can do in global regions. Because there is a measure provided in the migration services as well as the import tools, you can import a VM as an image and use these tools. And that's the part about army migration. After we get your army ready, and we will operate the EC2 instances, we will consider about the ways of easy management. So how to manage the EC2 instances or your account stack in a simple way? There are two suggestions here. First of all, you can set up a SSH or RDP workstation for service management. And this workstation should be placed in a region that is near to the China regions. Or you can just set up the workstation in the United States region or APEC region. Because now we have the optimized internet routes from China regions to the APEC regions and the United States regions. You may have to set up a proxy with optimized net internet for cross-region access, which is also leveraging the optimized route from China to global regions. And thirdly, after we get army prepared and the workstation ready for the daily management and of operations, we should consider about the ways to make the developer resources easy to access. For example, there are some good resources like GitHub and Docker Hub that's in need of access from your environment in China. And as I mentioned, there is internet of optimized route from China regions to the global regions. And there are also some third party services that can provide an optimized network access, which can be used in the access here. And as a local alternative, you can also leverage some local vendor resources or services such as hub.docklab.io, which is a kind of services providing the Docker Hub-like services in China. And then you don't need to access to the resources outside mainland China. You can just access the resources in mainland China with least latency. And that's the whole building block that I mentioned again and again when users get started to use China regions. Another part about the technical practice is the automation. 
we need to automate the deployment and the configuration with the command line and the SDK. It is a good news that in China regions, it is supposed to be exactly the same as SDK and the command line as you are using in the global regions. For example, the first item I list gives an example of the URLs which you can see is exactly the same as the global regions. But if you are using or setting up these tools, you should be aware that the Beijing region and Ningxia region are using different alias for the region names, which make it correct in the configuration of the tools and your SDK so that it can work normally. And especially when you examine the configuration in details, you will find the endpoint in different in China regions from the global regions. Because there's, there is a .cn suffix appended to the domain name, taking Beijing region as an example, say you are accessing a service like called XYZ and then the endpoint will become the xyz.cn-north-1 which is the alias of Beijing region and then .amazonaws.com and then appended by the .cn The whole endpoint is available in China for the service access and please aware that for the new regions including China regions the signature version 4 is the only signature version that is supported, which means if you have any open source tools or self-made tools that is still using signature version 2, please replace the signature virtual version 2 with version 4 to access the China region smoothly. And by the way, in the global regions, there is also a public roadmap in the field that all the signature algorithms for the endpoint access will be updated to signature version 4. So please update the ver signature version as soon as possible. We can talk about complexity without mentioning connectivity. It is indeed one part that usually catch foreign companies off guard because, because it is quite unique in operating in China in terms of network. It is unique because it is inconsistent and we have done a lot on your behalf. In order to help improve the situation, we have done international peering. You will find that compared to when we initially started, we have seen the packet lost drop from close to 30% to less than 2% as you connect from China region into international AWS regions. So that's a marked improvement because of the peering work that we were doing with the various ISP telcos. We will add the direct net pop locations. I hope you understand what direct net pop location is. It is an ability for you to connect from your data center inside China into AWS region. Of course, we have the connections in Beijing and Ningxia, but we have added connections in Shenzhen and Shanghai. This is actually very important in China because in China, the cross-province connectivity options is very expensive. It's also almost as expensive as international line. So by providing a pop location closer to the customer, closer to where customers are likely having data centers, we will greatly reduce the cost of our customers trying to connect indirectly into us. We added CloudFront. This is a frequently requested feature since we launched. I will go into details of CloudFront later. Now, we also have added VPC peering to allow you to connect two regions in a safe and secure manner. In fact, we added recently Direct Connect Gateway, which means if you have data centers in China, all you need to do is to connect to either one of the regions. And that will give you access to both regions. This concept is similar to the Direct Connect Gateway 
in the international market where you connect to one region you can reach out to other international regions through AWS backbones the same thing goes in a direct connect gateway in China as well but you are connecting the two regions within China mainland we also support IPv6 I want to mention Hong Kong here as well because of the proximity of to Hong Kong a lot of our telco partners China Telecom, China Unicom and China Mobile already have this line line up between Beijing and Ningxia regions to Hong Kong that means for customers who may want to set up in a more cost-effective manner they have the ability to cover up the lines through CMMI for you so you can quickly connect from say Beijing regions to Hong Kong and from Hong Kong because there, there is a direct connect port for global regions you have quick access to many regions around the world so there are basically various options for customers to consider if, if you have traffic in and out of China whereby you need more QoS control internet works but it may be inconsistent so we give the options and some choices to our customers if you want more QoS level support you find we have partners providing those lines for you and I'll show you more on the next slides so uh, this is maybe a simplified explanation of what I have just explained in the top part you find that internet definitely works for connectivity we have many customers operating their environment in China from remote countries and that can route to internet for customers that want more secured authorized and dedicated line for yourself you can take the bottom half whereby a telco can either give you a point-to-point -point connections or you can go to Hong Kong connection like I mentioned earlier which gives you a breakdown into two parts the first part will be from Beijing to Hong Kong and the second part will be from Hong Kong through AWS direct net gateway into the international regions this consideration will be a part of due that diligent process of the solution implementation that our pre-sales solution architects are happy to work with your team on so that we can advise you on the best options we added CloudFront in 2019 this is really a frequently requested feature since we launched right now we started in four locations Beijing Ningxia, Shanghai, and Shenzhen all the major metropolitan cities additional parts have been planned in 2020 still CloudFront in China region provide programmability with content management for example media streaming near real-time logs tracking with CloudWatch fast change propagation etc also, you can continue to use security features provided by CloudFarm to protect, protect your data and access, like encryption with SSL and TLS, complying with PCI, Hyper, ISO, and SOC, etc. Should standard service is enabled by default for DDoS protection. As for access control, you can use OAI to reject access to your original data source like S3 same as the global regions we keep the low cost offer when providing CloudFront services we offer pay as you go pricing model you can even have customized private pricing upon request with an agreement please be aware that Lambda Edge is not available now if you need this feature please go to our essays for alternative solution now let's talk about the migration scenarios all assets are very happy to provide a technical validation on your solution before your migration we will review your solutions identify the service gaps 
all the customized requirements that you want. If there is no any services map missing, we can move to the left part in the bottom. What you need to do is copy or redeploy your service. You can use CloudFormation or Terraform or your other favorite tools for infrastructure deployment. And then you can use Cloud Endure for VM and DB migration with one-click migration and migrate the data in the other storage like S3 or EBS if needed. If we found some services map gap there, we should move to the right part in the bottom. Our essay will clarify about your requirements. Recommend alternative services according to your use cases. And review the feasibility of the solution. You just need to follow the advice to replace the missing services with the alternative from AWS or our APM partners. And the rest steps are the same as the steps of grid deployment. You don't need to worry about the service gap in China region. As we can see, the trend of the service landing speed is growing up very quickly in China regions. The number of missing services become less and less. And even for the missing services, we have already prepared alternative solutions provided by our APM partners. For some big companies with multiple organizations and lots of branches, when you want to move your China IT solutions into the cloud, you need to design the solution very carefully due to the complex IT environment. You might have many teams. They could be in the same account or overstepping one another. You might need isolation. There could be different security needs and want to isolate them from one another. That could be due to being multiple teams with possibly different security profiles. As for security controls, different applications might have different controls around them. For example, it is far easier to talk to an auditor and point to a single account hosting the PCI solution. But even within an organization, it provides the ability to, to isolate certain things based on security isolation needs. Regarding business process, there are completely different business units or products that need to be taken care of. In global, AWS offer landing zone service to manage this kind of complexity. Although in China, the organization service is on the way, we can also offer customized landing zone solution with our professional service. We have helped a lot of big international companies to implement their landing zone in AWS China successfully. I will show you a reference case as an example later. When you need to migrate your data from global to AWS China, there will be two different scenarios. First one, when you need to perform a bug files transfer, the latency is not sensitive. For example, you need to transfer files from global EC2 to China EC2, or you need to copy the files from global EC2 to China S3 bucket, or copy the objects from global S3 to China S3. For these cases, you can utilize the optimized route from China EC2 to global region EC2. We have done a lot with the support from ISP telcos. We set up optimized route between China EC2 to global EC2. You can utilize this optimized route when you need to transfer files between China region and global region. First, you can put files into the source EC2, use SCP or Tsunami to copy the files to the destination EC2. Note that you should turn on the TCP BBR in the server side EC2. TCP BBR is for network traffic congestion control. The transfer speed will be amazing after you enable BBR. When the files arrive to the destination EC2, you can use the local network 
to move the data to S3 or other destination you want. If you want to migrate the data from other cloud vendor to AWS China, please go to our SA. We will provide you solutions recommendation accordingly. Second scenario, if you need a real-time data transfer, like in the phase call or data synchronization, etc., you need to select the right cross-border network connection according to your requirements on the latency, bandwidth, QoS. Direct connect is the one with highest QoS and the most expensive one. Note that you should also consider the compliance of Chinese cyber law. We offer different kind of programs to accelerate your solution expansion to China. Here, I would like to talk about the GCR migration program. The objective of the migration, GCR migration program is to help GCR customers to achieve substantial business benefit by migrating existing workloads to AWS. The program consists of a Azure migration methodology a global network of VAT partners, automation tools, a chain path to upskill staff, professional services, and financial investment to help mitigate potential risk and manage double bubble costs for migration projects. More importantly, the successful, successful migration will lead to further innovation and business growth. We will also offer some promotional credit to help to initiate your migration process, which help to cover some of the costs generated during test. Also, we provide training to help to build up the competence of your team. Here, I am happy to show you a reference for Landing Zone implementation in AWS China. Bayer is an innovative company with more than 150 years of history. This company has more than 9,000 employees in the world. They are facing some challenges when trying to build up a cloud platform environment with centralized IT control. They need the localization from global landing zone to China landing zone. They need standardization for the operation procedure and the simplicity introduced by the cloud native and managed services. Our professional service team helped them to clarify the requirements, define the security baseline and extensions, and provide process recommendation for cloud operations. Through this, AWS helped customer to achieve their targets, and they are very satisfied. Tony Chu, the head of IT, Operation Platform and Infrastructure said, The AWS Preserve team provides a very professional consulting service to help buyer China build a cloud platform environment that can better empower the business. There are a lot of global companies that have successfully deployed cloud services in China with AWS solutions. I just list a very small part here, including many famous logos. For example, Samsung, Adobe, Siemens, Philips, etc. Please contact us if you have any questions. We are very happy to support you. Thank you all for attending this webinar. If you have any questions, you could continue to post your question in the chat box. Our experts will answer your question in text or send you the answer through email after the webinar. Thank you very much and have a nice day.